opportunity of speaking to the nation because they say they're programming. And so many people will hear me after today. So I just want to touch on two things right here. The first thing is, why are we trying to do this thing? What is the objective of this exercise? Exercise of the people. Why are we trying to do this? My only little answer to all of us is that we want to send a strong message. We, the people of Liberia, we, the commoners, those of us who are up there, those in the middle, those of you who carry the press around, we all want to send a very strong message to the government of the Republic of Liberia and to the international community. We want them to know that it is time for any government, the government of today, the government of tomorrow, any government to come, it is time that they take the correct measures, the correct measures, do the right thing, that will do two critical results. One, that will shape our future, the future of this country. And the future of this country will not know a land space, but the land space is there. But we are talking about the people in that landscape to give them a better future. This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to go for the government now and in the future to make sure that Liberia's future is well shaped. Secondly, we're sending a strong message to the government to know that the corrective measures are needed for us to make a difference in this country. There's so many challenges, especially so we are not just in isolation, it's not just Liberia on this map. We got Ghana, Red Nationals, we got Guinea, we got Sierra Leone, we got far away South Africa, we have Brazil. All over the world, we are part and parcel of this global world. And if we keep the way we are, then I'm sorry for our generations to come. I think this is the best thing we want to say. This thing we're trying to do. And so when we hear on the radio, and people are talking, oh, Dr. McIntosh is not suffering. Why is he part and parcel of this thing? Oh my God. Someone put in the Bible just now. And the question here also be, if I am not suffering, I got my bed rest in my house. I have my one thousand dollars in my pocket. But around me, I see the people can I afford a cup of rice. Then it, it, it bothers me unless I'm in human. So the little one thousand I have, I could keep creeping on it to make sure that other people get something. We are one and you know, by each other brother, with each other. Keep us. And so the fact that I can afford a better rice in my house, I can buy gasoline for my car, and I see around me mass, young men and young women just on care and take the thing that like women selling that as we were saying. The cassava leaf by four o'clock is all withered. Even newspapers. I can't see a country where by six o'clock in the evening, newspaper boys are still standing selling newspapers. Which country is that? Say something. There was a time in this country, but in that time you can't find newspapers. Why is it taking us six o'clock on the highway? Kids are still selling newspapers. Somebody selling chewing gum. Two sticks of chewing gum in their hand, two or three, and then they're talking about oh, you know, sell their chewing gum, their chewing gum. And I'm in my comfortable car. I feel guilty. I feel tight. So I begin to wonder at times. That's not part of suffering that mental torture. A country with so much, and yet with our boys and girls out in the streets selling banana and, and, and rice of bread and all those kind of things. Fathers cannot go home with money. Mothers cannot take care of their children. And yet I'm comfortable in my house. No, I must suffer mentally. And I'm suffering. So I wanted to get that message across. I want to say suffering. 
It's not the fact that I cannot buy a bed of rice. But I can suffer in my anguish. I'm suffering also mentally because we all thought by this time that Europe would have been taking some kind of leeway for zero. So that's mental torture and suffering. The last point I want to make, because uh, we've been here too long, is there's a small message for people out there. This is Mama Liberia. I hope you get the message. This is our mother, Liberia. Our mother is sick. We, the children of Liberia, whether you live in the Thomas or wherever, we, the children of Liberia, we have to do something. Our mother is sick. And so when we come to the question of this right, it is not. December 17. Please listen to me well. Those of you who will be listening to the radio station later on, this message, this action goes beyond December 17. In other words, we're moving between now and election day. During that whole day, those of us who are suffering mentally, who are suffering physically, those who are suffering with no rights to eat, we must be saying to ourselves, we are tired of suffering. Until the day we go to the Father's house. So it's beyond sanity. Whatever we do, how we mobilize ourselves during the whole question all the way to the election box, we should be mindful that we have to do everything possible to shape the future of this country. There are two sides. There are two sides here. We have to take a choice. Either we go to those who say they want to be bystanders. Bystanders may something happen and I get going to stand on the fence and I'm watching it. Deep down in my heart, I want to be part, but I'm scared. So I'm watching. So those who want to be bystanders, there are two sides here. You are not for the people, of this country and the future of this country all you have for this whole calamity we find ourselves in today. So please, on Saturday, in fact, I, got it when I was talking to one of my relatives and he said to me, Dad, are you going to be there? I said, I will arrive before the rally start. Okay. I will arrive there before the rally start and I will have my t-shirt. We are suffering. I didn't see the symbol. See that we won't cry. Somebody said, oh, I have no. My mother was selling uh, peanuts. My mother used to sell farina. Farina gari. And those days, two sell a cup of one cent. Then at one time, she cried from farina, she was selling salt. So I, I know what it is. So I will be there. And I'll be left to okay on behalf of Louis, who is not here, and as you all know, I am certainly a part of the comics. Uh, sometimes people ask me, what are you doing there? What's your title? I am the advisor to that team. And I think my team members and the Latin people know exactly what some of us can do politically. <laughs>